Dr. Sanchez. I'm, I keep wanting to say I'm a chief general surgery resident, but I'm not anymore. I'm a first year plastic and reconstructive surgery fellow or resident. Apparently the two are used interchangeably. I've been working for three weeks straight. Why? Because I had the first two weekends off of the month and then I had to work the next two weekends, mostly because I had my boards at the beginning of the month. And so I was studying and cramming and doing all those things. Anyway, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for watching. This video is going to be about how I study to become a surgeon, a general surgeon, and now a plastic and reconstructive surgeon. <laughs> that I'm still in the process of figuring out. But I feel as though I've been studying for long enough that I am an appropriate individual to make this video. You would think by now I would have mastered studying. <laughs> have I? I don't know. We shall find out when I get my board exam next month. <laughs> I used to suck at studying. I'm not even gonna lie to you, I think that I went into my current career not knowing how to study, <laughs> which sounds really insane because you think that somebody that's trying to become a doctor knows how to learn things. Let's start with high school. I'm not gonna bore you with my entire life story, but I will say that I went to a very small high school in the middle of nowhere during elementary, middle, and high school. I was not really a person who studied. I was one of those people who once I heard things a few times, I could mostly remember it. Maybe I would study the day before the exam, but that was about the extent of my studying. And usually I would score really high 90s. Granted, I didn't go to a crazy difficult high school. I went to a small public high school in the middle of nowhere. It was called Woodland High School. <laughs> You can look it up. It's probably still there. I don't know if it has the same name. During high school, I didn't really develop any good study habits because I was doing just fine without them. When I went to college. That's when I realized I was not very good at studying. I remember I signed up for some courses and then I figured out that I wanted to be pre-med and so I signed up for a biology 101 class. Biology 101. I took my first exam, did not great at all, and ended up getting a tutor and trying to figure out what it is that I was doing wrong. And as I went through college, I kind of realized that I could cram. Usually I would give myself two up to three days before the exam and just cram it all out, which is not the way that you should be studying. I would sometimes stay up all night the night before an exam and then somehow be able to pull through and get a decent score on that exam. When I got to medical school, <laughs> it was another shock to the system. <laughs> I remember we would have lecture from 8 a.m. to noon every single day. You could either go to the lectures or you could watch them from home. It wasn't mandatory to attend. There were some that were mandatory and obviously you had to go to anatomy lab in person and whatnot. But a lot of the times some people would watch all the lectures from their house other people like me would go to lecture for the most part because otherwise there's no way that I was going to sit at home and watch four, eight, or however many hours of accumulated video I had to watch. Medical school, the first week, we covered my entire biochemistry course. The entire course. I was just like, what, what else is there to learn if we already covered everything that we covered over a semester or however long in undergrad? I didn't realize that medical school was more about knowing how to study, knowing how to learn massive amounts of information, just the sheer volume of information that you're trying to memorize. And the way that my med school worked is we didn't have exams on individual topics. We basically had exams after every block, I th if I remember correctly. That block encompassed all different topics, like a six or seven hour exam on everything. The whole idea of this is to kind of prepare you for the boards because the board exams for medicine are like that. You're not going to be tested on individual topics. You're going to be tested on a seven or eight hour exam that's going to ask you about anything and everything that you have potentially learned. In medical school, I would say that I somewhat developed my study habits. I would study with a group, so we would talk through things, we would quiz each other on things, ask questions back and forth, and I learn a lot by just talking about things, talking through things, or having a conversation with someone about the topic. I'm more likely to remember that conversation than me reading a paragraph or reading for 30 minutes about whatever topic. Getting into residency. If I'm being honest, I would say that I didn't really learn how to properly study until residency, maybe even the last few years, which sounds insane. I don't think that I was studying in the most efficient way. The main things that I realized that I had been doing wrong in my previous studying, and I think the first thing was using too many sources. We live in a world of vast, vast, vast amounts of information, and it can be overwhelming because there's literally a million books that you can read 
on any given topic, especially for general surgery. You can find a different textbook every day of the week, every day of the year if you want. Yes, there are core textbooks that everybody recommends. First thing that I did was I identified two or three main sources that I was going to use for my study. In the past couple of years for general surgery, I would say Saviston, which is one of the books that we use, was a reference book for me. Was I reading Saviston start to finish every other day of my life? No. There are probably people out there who did. I use Saviston more as a reference. Two is Behind the Knife. It is a series of podcasts that I would listen to. I also did a prep course. Now the prep course that I did two years ago, I ended up doing three different prep courses just because I wanted to try them all out and see which one was better. Out of the three, I would say I liked one of them. The other two I didn't find to be that helpful. I did them on the weekends leading up to the exam. The third thing that I did was a bunch of questions. I didn't know what to focus on. I didn't know what they were going to ask and I didn't know how they were going to ask those questions. Best way to get past that is by doing more questions. More questions, the better. And so I did multiple question banks <laughs> that I found. Best of these was probably the TrueLearn question bank. This is the number one resource that I used in my general surgery training. We have all these different categories of questions and you can put together different tests. You can make them random. You can do the ones that you missed. You can do specific topics, you can kind of organize it however you want. You can do timed versions or you can do untimed versions. And for every question, they have a really, really good explanation where they go through what the answer is and then why the other answers are incorrect. And so I think that's super important because if you can start to recognize the patterns of the questions, what they're asking, what it is they want you to know, you're more than likely going to recognize that if you see the same concept in a different format. Okay, so I did want to show you guys how the True Learn Question Bank works. So you just go to the website. I have the American Board of Surgery Qualifying Exam Question Bank. You can set a date, for example. I just kind of put in an arbitrary date there. It tells you how many days you have left. You can set your goal percentile that you want. 99 is a little excessive, but one can dream. Oh, we're just going to dismiss this. And then you go over here, you can quickly create a little exam for yourself. You put in the number of questions. It can be timed, untimed, or tutor mode, which is my favorite. You can do new, used, incorrect, marked, whatever. I usually just do new. I make the little exam, and then here pops up the first question. A 48-year-old male presents to the office with intermittent right upper extremity pain, paresthesia, and weakness. His symptoms are worsened by turning and tilting his head. Adson test is positive, and he's diagnosed with thoracic outlet syndrome. Which of the following muscles is involved in thoracic outlet syndrome? So click on the one that I think it is, scalene muscle, and then once you submit it, it takes you to this amazing explanation. It has a diagram. It goes through why the answer is correct. And then it goes through every single answer choice and explains why those are not correct. They even provide a little reference article at the bottom. And then you just go on to the next question. I'm a little mad they don't have a plastic surgery question bank, but whatever. I thought about the best way to make this video and I did to just make it a casual conversation and me just telling you my experience with studying through the years and what has worked for me and what hasn't worked. Do my study tips for the past couple years. What I think has worked out of my, let's see, eight plus five, 13, 13 years of post high school education and becoming a surgeon. Number one thing is you need to identify some resources. You need to identify two, three, I would say max three good comprehensive resources that you want to use in your studies. Second, you need to identify some question banks. You need to find questions, whether it's a book full of questions, whether it's a question bank online, you need to do as many questions as possible. And when you're doing the question, you need to figure out what it is they are trying to test you on. Every question has a goal. Every question is trying to test you on some topic. And if you can try to decipher that as you're doing the questions, you'll get the most out of it. Three, the thing that I think is most important that people often overlook is that repetition is key. The best way to remember something really well is by repeating it multiple times. And I think a lot of times when we're studying, we get so bogged down in wanting to use so many resources, wanting to read so many things, wanting to learn so many things that don't repeat things over and over. The reality is that it can't possibly test you on everything 
on this exam or any exam that you take. You need to focus in on the topics that they are most likely to test you on. Lastly, I would probably say, I don't think I mentioned this before, I made a lot of flashcards toward the end. I used Quizlet because I'm not an Anki girl because I never understood Anki. I don't know how it works. It's too complex for me. And so I use Quizlet, but I think the best way to use the flashcards is not making flashcards on everything because if you try to make flashcards on everything, it's just like the resources. You're gonna get bogged down in a million resources. You're gonna get overwhelmed and you're not gonna learn anything. Best way to do it is to make flashcards on the topics that you tend to miss. One thing that I did is as I was doing questions throughout the year, I had an qu ongoing Quizlet where I would put in every question that I got wrong, every concept that I got wrong, I would make a flashcard on that. So I had an entire deck of flashcards by the end of the year of everything that I tend to miss or tend to forget or anything like that. That deck of cards is what I would study over and over and over. And leading up to the exam, I would try to almost go through it once a day or once every two days. I was repeating and repeating and repeating the things that I get wrong. There's another thing that people I think get fooled into doing studying the same things that we already know. It's almost like a little ego boost. You know when you're studying, you're reading your notes and you come across something that you understand fully and you're like, oh, I get that, I know this. And it kind of tricks you into thinking that you know more than you do. I tried to avoid that by only making my flashcards on the things that I knew I was missing and that I didn't know well so that I didn't become overconfident as I'm reading through my notes and going through all the things that I already understand. For anybody that's watching this, first of all, thank you for coming back to my channel. Thank you for watching my videos not presented in a super objective way, which I could make a video where I present this information in a much more objective way, but again, I wanted this to be a casual conversation. I wanted to kind of tell you about my experience, tell you how I studied to become a doctor, how I studied to become a surgeon. Now I'm still studying because I still have oral general surgery board exam. Hopefully, assuming that I pass my written board exam, I will find out in a few weeks. What I do want to say is that I want to remind you that exams aren't always indicative of your intelligence level. Never let any one exam, any exams that you take, determine your value or whether or not you think you're intelligent. If I look tired, it's because I am tired. Best of luck to all of you in all of your schooling or training, or if you're not in school, please enjoy your life because the one thing that I've realized at this point in life is that success isn't about any sort of title. I know easy for me to say because I've gotten here and I'm a doctor and all these things, but success really isn't about a title, it's about being happy. Whatever happiness means to you, that's what's important. And I hope that all of you are happy, I hope that all of you enjoy every step of the journey that you're on, and feel free to come back to my channel anytime. <laughs>